All right, I haven't made any videos for a while because uh, it's been like repeat stuff and I've already showed you that stuff before and I don't want to go over the same things over and over and over again. You know, I know some machining channels, they show you kind of the same things and I don't really want to do that with my channel. I want to show you some useful stuff that you can um, think about and you can use the information and get some use out of it, not just showing you the threading the same parts or turning or drilling. And, and I've got this little job and I think it might be interesting to show these parts here. I've got two parts like this. This is, this is the way they're supplied to, being supplied to me, it already turned. And, and so I just have to do the milling. So there's two like this and there's two like this. These are titanium and this, this is 17.4 pH stainless. I've, light, I've lightly chucked this part in the chuck over here in the, in the Mazak. And I already had these jaws turned for something else. They seem to fit the part pretty good. But I'm a little bit concerned about only, only chucking on this, this length of the OD. And i um, got to do some milling out here and drilling and various things on the end of the part first in the first operation. And I'm, I'm thinking this might not hold the part good enough. I'm, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is take these screws out I ordered some uh, all-thread rod from McMaster Car and nuts so I can use the same thread as the jaw uses and I'll just take the screw out and, and thread this all-thread in here to where it sticks out and I'll make some clamps that go across the front of the flange here. I don't have to get back in here for the milling on this operation so it'll, it'll be fine. And uh, I'm going to clamp it, the part back in the chuck as well as, you know, chuck on the OD, this OD. And the other part here is actually a, a little thinner on this, so I'll have to kind of rig up something with the clamps. But they'll, they'll both fit in the same set of chuck jaws. Um, this one gets a, a little bit different milling on it than this one, and, and we'll look at the CAD models. And right now the job is mostly just in the planning, but there's there's some gun drilling going on here with these various gun drills. And the way the holes intersect each other might be causing me a problem, we'll see. And I'm gonna take some steps with these little pieces of a drill rod to push the drill rod in. I'll drill one hole first and then shove a piece in there and um, kind of support the intersection point of the two holes. You'll see what I mean in the CAD, in the CAD model. So let's look, let's, um, let's look at the computer here. And we'll see um, the various different, you know, the two different parts, the models of them and what I'm talking about here. So this is mostly just a uh, video about planning this job because these are the things I go through when I first start a job. I've got to figure out, you know, how to ex exactly do this in the, in the order of operations, if you will, to do the job. So let's look at the computer um, screenshots and we'll kind of get an idea of what I'm planning here. All right, here's the model like of the part that you saw in the chuck right now which this is the 17.4 pH part and let, let me show you what the stock looks like which you saw on the bench there so this key and the, all of this OD is going to be machined away right here to form that that uh, key in the part and so that's going to be a little bit of not heavy milling, but it's going to be putting force on the part, and that's, you can see the reason I don't want to uh, just chuck onto that part. The rest of this on the on the end is mostly drilling. There's a counterbore here and, and some holes here, and they're probably not too bad, and that might work with the part just chucked the way it is, but I, I want to come uh, uh, down this OD from the end of the part, rotating the C-axis with a long, longish end mill. I think the, the distance from, well, let's just measure it here, from this to here 
it's a little less than three inches, so I could I could probably um, come in there with a th three quarter inch end mill and mill away all this OD here up to the key, and then then I would just have to um, work around this key here to get these square um, sides and the flat top on it and the chamfers. So I'm I'm a little bit worried about just holding on to that. You saw in the previous segment it's not really holding on and I don't really trust that three jaw chuck that that much to really hold on to a part that that manual chuck really strongly so I, as I said I'm gonna put those clamps on the top of the jaws and I think it'll be fine after I do that but but that's not really the what's kinda of intricate about this part really let me um let me select the the solid of the part and you can kinda of see here what we're talking about I don't know if you can see these holes and where they intersect let me let me actually um, I'll, I'll cut a section through this thing here and you can kind of see so this hole coming off at an angle is going to be intersecting this other hole at a very slight angle I guess you'd say so there's a lot of um, area here where the drill's not going to be supported. And this is kind of a, worrying me a little bit here that a gun drill does pretty good with this kind of thing, but not for that distance. This is like over an inch long here. And the, the tip of the drill isn't that long, and so it's not going to support it. So what, what I'm kind of um, thinking of doing was putting a, that those pieces of um, drill rod that I showed you on the bench earlier I'm, I would drill this this long hole um, actually I drill the short hole first up into here and then I'd, I'd shove this piece of rod up there and then as this one drilled remember it's solid when it's drilling so as it gets up in here and it intersects this other piece of drill rod and, and although it's not exactly the same material I think it'll still support the drill fine the gun drills don't really have too much trouble with this kind of thing so so it would uh it would support the drill as it goes down through here so that would be for that hole and then the other hole and this this particular piece would be supporting that drill so i drill this hole first where the where you see the orange slug i guess you call it in there and then I would drill this other hole right here and it intersects that and it helps support the drill as it passes by this intersection point otherwise I have a feeling that it would break the drill and cause trouble so so that's sort of my idea there there's also some special tools that have to be made to do this that these are um these ports here well, I, I, I always used to call these like autoclave engineering ports because what they do is there's, there's a thread on this OD here and the, um, and this 60 degree taper, which usually is made, I usually make it with like a center drill or something, um, seals on a, on a conical tip on the end of the tubing and they, and they thread this in here in such a way that it pushes that conical tip in there in this, in this area here and it uh, makes a metal-to-metal -metal seal. These are for very high-pressure um, ports. You know, they, they go like 20, 30, 40,000 PSI with these things. So that's that. But this, this here, they specified the bottom of this um, counterbore for the thread to have this five-degree taper or on it. And that is a little bit new for me. I've never done that before on this kind of a port but anyway they're calling it out so I have to make a tool basically I'm going to grind an end mill that'll cut that um and have that five degree angle on the tip and I can go in there and just kind of mill a circle and then come in here with a center drill and spot that hole so not too big a deal but just something that has to be done because of the way they drew this part so these particular bores over here have have close tolerances and finishes these ones and that has to, so they're going to have to be bored but the rest of this is pretty straightforward it's just going to be um, 
this milled counter bore, and there's a 3 8 hole that goes all the way through there. And then there's these two, I think these holes, I don't remember, on one of the parts these are threaded holes. Maybe it's on this other part. I think this part there are threaded holes, half 13s. So that's kind of the, the I guess you'd call the semi um, sort of tricky part about this these parts is these these holes are intersecting at these very slight angles and so I have to kind of think about the order to do this in because otherwise you'd be breaking your drills you know if you do it in the wrong order so in this case on this one I'm going to drill this hole first where you see the orange slug and then I'll come in and I'll drill this hole afterwards on that one as well so so these parts are kind of well, let me turn the um, part transparent here so you can kind of see what's happening so that that hole that orange slug there you would you would need to drill one hole and then the other one there's another one in here that intersects the other set of holes from these counter bores that come in from the other end of the part. Now, I, I don't know what they're doing with this part or anything, so I can't really say how they're going to make these seal on, the, on this end with these high pressures that they're probably dealing with. They don't usually use these fittings unless they're using extremely high pressures. These little holes that come in at an angle here are just kind of a on these kind of ports they put this hole to, there so that you can kind of tell if you have a leak right here and it kind of bleeds the you can see if you have a leak because it doesn't necessarily leak through the thread that fast and so that's why they usually put these little angle holes these are just little 330 seconds holes that intersect the bottom of this counter bore so you can detect a leak on your fitting and these blue holes are just spanner wrench holes. So the first operation on these parts is going to be done from this end. And it's kind of important to do it in this order, um, particularly on this port with the keyway that's milled. So we're looking at it kind of like this. And these angled holes require the, the five axis positioning ability of the Mazak to do them. I mean, you could probably fixture this up in some ways and do it on a standard machine, but it's just so much easier on the Mazak to do this. You can just pretty much use one fixture offset on the end of the part, and then the, the cam software tilts the spindle and everything and rotates the C-axis so that everything is, is um, lined up with the tool when the B-axis is tipped at the angle like this. For instance, for this one hole right here, it'll be all lined up and you can just drill straight in at that whatever angle the b-axis needs so it's, it's really pretty convenient to do it on the, on a five axis machine like this mazak is so like i said i'm going to drill those holes first where the um those orange slugs are and then we'll drill the other and shove this um rod in there the the drill rod now the high pressure coolant has about well it has 1500 psi but you're probably not going to actually be developing the full 1500 psi but if we calculate if i calculate that out with the just the area on the end of this um 3 16th diameter rod it could be pushing out with about 45 pounds of, of force if you actually develop the full 1500 psi and um I haven't really figured out as of yet how to hold those rods in there. I might just bend them a little bit and then just kind of drive them in there and that might be enough just to hold them in there. It's kind of like you're wasting this piece of material on every part, but it's inexpensive that those little pieces of drill rod and it's not really a problem. And I just kind of maybe I'll just drill the hole and then I'll I'll put a bend in the rod and then I'll just drive it in there up to the depth I need and then uh drill the hole and then just pull it out of there. It, it might be a little tricky to pull it out. I, I got a slide hammer I can hook some vice grips on or something I think. If I make this this piece like like stick out here a little ways like this I can grab onto it with the vice grips and uh, pull it out of there. It's probably the way I'll do it. I think that'll work. 
um, I don't think the coolant will blow them out of there with uh, with that the friction of the, of the bent rod holding it in there. So that's sort of the plan here. So we got to drill these holes first uh, and mill these counter bores. And on the other part, there's a um, kind of a little bit more detail on the end here with this pocket. I have no idea. I haven't a clue what this even does. This part also requires a special tool to be made for for this. This one, I have to um, grind something special here to come in and make this undercut. There's a little undercut in the, um, let's see if I can show it in section view here. Under here, and it requires kind of a little special cutter to do this. You can kind of see it there on the, um, model and I've kind of just drew up this little cutter to do that there which I'm, I got to grind these tools on the grinder to do it I mean maybe I could buy this I don't know but it's just as easy for me to grind it so this ends gonna be done first like this I'm gonna do all this milling on the end of both of these parts on both parts on this end then we'll flip it around and we'll chuck onto these diameters and line up on, in this case, I can line up on the key on this part and then on this uh, internal key on this part and set my C0. And then I, I would be doing this end of the part and putting in these um, ports and these, these various holes on this end. So that's kind of the plan to do this. Now all I have to do is I've been collecting tooling and everything and now I have to do is program this and set it up. So these are the kind of things I kind of go through looking at. And like I say, this particular job, it's the intersecting holes that are, are going to be the real issue here. And drilling them and supporting the drill to make sure you don't break the tip of the drill off. Because this isn't, there just isn't enough support for even a gun drill to, to drill into there and, and uh, do these intersections, They're, they overlap too much because of the very slight angles that they're going for. So that's about it for this video. I'm going to um, set this up and program it and everything and then I'll show you how it actually works in the next video. So thanks for watching.